I'm going to say straight up, if you're serious about low end, keep watching because the plugin that I'm about to show you changes everything. Let me show you. Have a listen to this 808 kick drum. It's a very, very simple mono kick drum, mono. There's no side information, no stereo information. I'm gonna start with off and then I'm gonna turn it on. Ready? Massive, but check out the multi-correlation meter in Cubase if you're familiar with this. No problems. Our low end is solid. So let me show you how this plugin can achieve these results, can give you a super 3D bass while retaining mono compatibility, because this is great for mixing, it's amazing for mastering, and it can really change the sound of your mixes forever. So this plugin was just released, it's from Tone Projects, and it's called Bass Lane Pro. Now, I've talked about Tone Projects plugins before. I talked about their Kelvin plugin in my top saturation plugins video. You can watch it right here. And I also have their Unisom compressor. And just because you might see me extremely excited about this plugin, I want to make it very clear. This is not a sponsored video. Tone Projects haven't paid me to make this video. The only thing that happened was they gave me early access to the plugin so I can give them my opinion. They didn't even ask me to make a video. So it wasn't like, a, okay, get the plugin, but please give us a video type of situation. Nothing like this. I was genuinely intrigued when they sent me this because I know they make exceptional plugins. So I fired it up in Cubase, I played with it, and in just a few minutes, I was blown away by it and what it can do. So with this out of the way, can I be excited about this plugin? Is this okay? <laughs> you know, I've lost count on how many times people ask me, how do I make my bass, my low end more 3D? without introducing problems into the mix, without losing mono compatibility. I have this sub bass, right? This is an 808 sub bass. And this is entirely mono. Now check what we can do to make this bass stereo, okay, out of this mono signal. Check this out. First, what I can do is I can say, you know what, I'm going to make sure that everything is mono below this certain frequency. Let's say 90 hertz. And this is a mono sound, so we won't hear any difference. But here's where the interesting things start to happen. So these are the stereo harmonics. Now, you're probably going to say, Dom, there's no stereo. You just said it's mono, right? This is what this plugin does so well. So let me show you how I can make this sub bass super wide and super rich, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go here and say I'm going to generate stereo harmonics from the mid signal because this is all we have, right? Let me show you. I don't know if you can tell how huge this thing is. So basically what this plugin does, I mean, the way I understand it, of course, you know, this just came out and uh, I mean, I had a little bit of time to play with it, but basically what it does is it takes the signal, it could be the mid signal, the stereo signal, the side signal, and it generates harmonics, but these harmonics go to the side signal. And this way you can retain the mono compatibility, especially if you're playing your music in clubs, if you're going to press vinyl, all these things, it's really, really important that your low end is nice and compact. But what it does is it injects stereo information for the low end, harmonics, in parallel. So not only it adds harmonics to the low end, which means that your bass is going to sound richer, but 
these are spread in the stereo field, which means you get a bass sound that really, like I like to call it, embrace your ears. Check this out. Listen, close your eyes and see what it does. Do you hear that? And you have different types of harmonics. So you have second, third order harmonics, you have even odd and crunchy. So listen to the difference. Okay, without. I'm gonna level match as well for those people. And as you can see, the meter here is really nice and analytical. But just for proving that this is the case, I also have the supervision from Cubase with a multi-correlation meter. So as you can see, the bass sounds super wide. But our low end is nice and in phase. No problems there. Now what this mid side knob does is it spreads the harmonics from the mid to the side signal. Now if you go all the way to the side, these harmonics are going to disappear when you sum in mono. And I'm going to show you this in Cubase so that you can understand how it works. So this sounds super wide, but you can see we're in the red territory here. So Bass Lane Pro tells us that there's going to be a problem there. See, so they, they just disappeared with mono. Now if I turn to the mid, they appear again, but it's still wide. This is one of the plugins that I would really suggest that you read the manual. I'm saying this for every piece of equipment and every plugin and every application, you know me, but especially for this one, you will make yourself a favor if you read the manual. I don't know any other plugin that can do this. Up to this point, when I wanted to do something like this, I had my own tricks, uh, so they were really, really advanced techniques and they would take time and they would take like a specific uh, routing, a specific procedure. It was not easy. And this plugin does it for me straight away. And of course it does it in its own unique way, which I am a big fan of. Now let's talk about mastering for a second. Now what I would do when it comes to mastering, of course there are quite a few presets right here that you can use and they sound amazing. But what I would do for a mastering situation, because with mastering things are very critical, right? You don't want to make any mistakes. What I would do would be to have a low pass filter, with a 12 or 18 dB slope. And then I would just set the frequency where I want my low end to be entirely mono. So as you can see, let's say 170, something like this. Now, then I can turn the width all the way down. Now, this way, these frequencies, you will see them here as well, are entirely mono. And then if I want, I can also activate the sub filter. Now this also makes sure that there's no dirt when it comes to the low end and the sub frequencies. So I can say I want to filter the stereo, the side signal, or I can add a boost. Now the boost is really, really interesting. So this is a resonant filter right there. So I can actually tune it to my kick drum. This is a very nice trick. <laughs> Thank you. 
So now I'm absolutely sure that everything is mono compatible. Okay, so there's not going to be any side information in my low end. And now what I can do is I can start introducing my harmonics. So I can say I want to introduce harmonics from my mid signal, from the stereo signal, or from the side signal. So you have total control. Now, this is something that you need to think about. You need to listen to your mix and evaluate where you want the enhancement with the harmonics to come from. So I could go for mids, especially if you have like a very solid kick drum or bass that lives in the center. So let's listen. And as you can see, this is very dynamic. So that's why we have this compress control here. So this can even out these harmonics if they're overly dynamic. See that? And I can dampen them as well. Okay. And right now I'm exaggerating, but you can hear the depth and richness that we've just added to this mix. And sometimes I like to play with the width as well and be a little bit naughty. I'm just adding a tiny bit and I check the correlation meters here. Now, if I lose level when it comes to the subs because, you know, we made the mono, you can compensate with the gain control here. And then we can also play with the dynamics. So I can go for my stereo dynamics. What the dynamic section does is it compresses or expands the filtered frequency range that we have selected. I like to set a really, really aggressive amount. And then I set the threshold so that I get activity. Or expansion. So the mix becomes so 3D and you can guarantee there's not going to be any problems when it comes to your sub frequencies, your low end, because you can see everything here. It's really remarkable what it does in my opinion. And I'm only scratching the surface here, right? This is very, very deep and there are many things that I'm pretty sure that I haven't had the chance to discover yet. And then there's this mono recovery section here. This section basically allows you to recover signals that would be lost because they're out of phase. So let's say you had a tom on the left channel. This could have been lost with all these processes, but this allows you to recover this. So this is maybe the most advanced thing. And most of the times I didn't find that I have to use it, to be honest with you, up to this point, but it's very nice that we have it there. Now, another thing that you can do with this plugin is you don't have to always use it to take care of your low end. I actually found it does way more than this. As you can see here, we have a low pass filter, but we also have a band pass filter. And that means that I can take care of my mid range as well. Check it out. You 
you know, so you can make sounds super wide. And because this stereo harmonics process here is really, really golden. Let me show you a preset that I've created. As you can see, I've already created quite a few presets. Let's try my pop mix opener. And I'm going to start without it first. Maybe it's a little bit too much for this mix, but you can hear the low end embracing your ears when I turn it on. Close your eyes and listen to the low end, okay? Without. You know, so this doesn't sound like an EQ, it doesn't sound like a saturator. And let me show you an example with some drums here. I'm gonna use my Modern 80s drum kit. If you want to support the channel, check it out, along with the Apollo expansion for Patch Shop. If you're doing cinematic music, if you're doing film composing, or you like super interesting synth sounds, if you enjoy it, grab a copy, and this way you're supporting this channel. Now let me load a preset here, and here I'm using the bandpass filter, and what I do is I sweep through the frequencies to find an interesting sound so that I can make these drums more three-dimensional. Check this out. Without. And again, you can go from subtle to really, really extreme. Now this is the pro version. I know there's going to be a free version as well that is going to be missing some of the features. I haven't tried this, I'm going to be honest with you, but it's definitely worth getting it. I'm really excited about this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about Bass Lane Pro. Like I said, this is not a sponsored video. I don't even have affiliate links or anything. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Take care of yourselves, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!